right, ladies and gentlemen, what is up? BQ here. This is the Impact Lounge Impact Review. We're talking Impact Wrestling and the Go Home Show to Bound for Glory. We've got Adam and Roe in the place to be, and we're going to talk Impact. This episode of the Impact Review is brought to you by the Fight app. So if you're listening on YouTube or the Podbean website, there's a clickable link where you can download the Fight app and support the Impact Lounge. So let's get an Impact right away. It's Bound for Glory weekend. I, I just I just want to talk about this episode. I want to get right into it. Um, I like this episode quite a bit. Uh, I did have a couple gripes, and I'll and I'll get into them. And there were two kind of major gripes in my opinion. But other than that, I I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Uh, Adam, what do you think about the show? Yeah, I, I thought it was really good as well. An improvement on the last two weeks. Although I thought last week was all right. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. It was good. Um, I watched it. Didn't fast forward. And, oh, I, actually, I did fast forward one match. If I'm being honest because uh, I watch it on DVR taped up. Uh, but yeah, it was good. It was really good overall. Good good go-home show. Yeah, um, I'm in agreement with both of you guys. Um, I thought it was great, mainly too, because normally when you have the go-home show before pay-per-view, it's a lot of uh, video packages, but they actually gave us matches, and, um, and it just got me excited for Bound for Glory. There were definitely some video packages here. I think that uh, that Moose and American Top Team one was was probably like three hours long. <laughs> that was <laughs> they repeated they repeated the same footage about three times within that three hours as well didn't they they really did and i think they played part of that last week too and i i thought the one thing i thought was like real funny and i didn't talk about it last week and maybe i'm the only person that laughed at this one when king mo was talking he's just like and the worst part no gym etiquette he didn't take off his shoes he didn't bow before <laughs> yet like <laughs> 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 like this mother- like like Moose gonna walk in and bow and then enter and go whoops the man. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. I thought I actually thought King Mo was <laughs> I liked his cause he was so natural. Like he was just speaking. There was no uh script or he didn't think about it beforehand. He just he just went. Didn't they interview the guy as well that you hate who sits sits in the background, you know, doing all the facial uh gestures that you hate? It that they gave him some time on the mic as well, didn't they? Did did they? Was he one of the ones who spoke? Yeah, well, certainly one of them. I thought that was the guy that you didn't like, but maybe it was a maybe it's just a collective hate that you have. It might have been. I mean, it was a, it, yeah, honestly, watching it, I kind of tuned out just because I already had seen most of it before. So, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely some gym etiquette is needed. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, Moose squares that away for Bound for Glory. But um, so I, let's get into it. Let's um, this very first match here. I really like this a lot. Uh, Rosemary and Allie versus Sienna and Casey Spinelli. Now, Casey Spinelli is heavily rumored to be joining the knockouts division in this set of tapings. She's Canadian. Allie has spoken very highly of her in the past. I'm, I became familiar with her during the Lucha World Cup last year. She was uh, Team Canada with Allie, and I, I don't remember who their third partner was the, for the life of me. But uh, I, I really enjoy this because it, it captured... What I always talk about the magic of independent wrestling where the matches are always really, really competitive no matter who's in there as opposed to the TV product where if we were to get the same exact pairing on Impact, it would have been a three and a half minute match. Casey Spinelli would have would have jobbed out and um, this was just all really re- uh, worked out very well. Now, this wasn't a TV product, so Casey Spinelli wasn't working towards a camera like the other girls know to do. And there, there was, you know, some lighting issues and everything. But overall, I really enjoy this. Uh, Ro, give me your thoughts on this one first. Yeah, I, I liked it, too. And I was wondering because I kind of felt that uh, um, with Casey Spinelli, I didn't get to see as much of her. And maybe like you were saying, as far as, you know, not working, not being accustomed to working towards the TV. But um, I liked it. I thought at the end, though, and maybe it's just me. Was that a botch, or do you think that was the finish? Because normally when we see people do the Germ- win with the German, they usually do it with the bridge. And I thought in this case we've seen um, Rosemary deliver the German and then just go for the pin. I don't know. Maybe it was just me. Do you think that was just how it was? or? Yeah, cause, well, because Allie was a le- legal person, so Rosemary couldn't. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. But, yeah, good match. Yeah, just jumping on, on the back of that, uh, just on the lighting issues – uh, those things don't bother me, you know, because I, it, it's something that I've talked to you two about, you know, when we're doing uh, the, the pre-show to these podcasts where we'll be talking. But I, I think the creative team, or not, not even so much the creative team, 
the, the production team do such a good job of sometimes having such limited resources to actually get a, a show on air. And th this, I'm sure if they would have not had Taryn leave and those kind of things, this show most probably never would have been on air. Um, I think this was brought in because they had to get something to fill the time, uh, which is why the lighting and things like that don't don't uh, really bother me. And I think the MVP at, at as opposed to the character MVP, but the MVP of Impact is the production team sometimes having to roll with the punches when you know people leave mid tapings and those kind of things. So so, but but going back to the match, I thought I thought it was great. Uh, I love the Rosemary spot. Um, one thing which is a bit random, and please don't take this as a body-shaming listeners. I, I'm not like that, but my daughter, who's 13, was watching it, and she's a big fan of Rosemary, but she did say to me, has Rosemary put on weight? <laughs> it was something that was noticeable <laughs> on some of the bits that she did. Um, but there you go. Maybe that's why she's uh, not, not in the main event. Uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, overall, I thought it was great. Really liked it. Yeah, I think it has to do with her outfit. Sienna wears something kind of similar where it's the, the upper torso is showing. Um, I, I think it makes them look a little a little thicker than they really are, personally. But uh, so this was good. This was good, some good stuff. And um, hopefully we're seeing a uh, future knockout in action here. It would have been nice. It, it would just be nice if the commentary gave a little more backstory and, and just there's more of a story they can tell to make us care about these matches a little bit more. And as far as all these matches with the crash and Noah and all that, I do enjoy them. I just don't want to see them as as filler. Like if if you know Eddie Edwards competes in Japan, I mean hype it up. He's gonna face Marafuji. Give us a reason to care about it. I just don't want it. Oh, we need we need to kill some time. So let's let's put this filler in there. That's that's kind of the difference. But this one was really well done. This this was a lot of fun. And um, one thing I didn't care for. This was my my gripe here one of my first gripes of the show was champions getting pinned I, i've always had an issue with that casey spinelli easily could have taken this fall and sienna takes uh takes the clean loss so does, did uh can i just jump in Ribro? i was going to say i've got a feeling the reason why she did is because they didn't expect to have to take this show so I, i'm guessing mc was uh a, a local, it's not a local wrestler, but a star of that promotion. So I'm guessing when they were putting together the booking of it, they were saying, well, we're not going to have our regular person who's on this show every week uh, or every couple of weeks when they put on the show uh, take the pin. So I'm guessing that's why. But yeah, I'm in agreement with you. The champion should be pinned in this. It should be not the job, but the enhancement talent. Yeah, um, I think, too, when, when they originally schedule the match you know there was probably no indication that it would be aired on uh, impact and with every, everything that's uh, happened over the past couple of weeks and maybe this was used as filler you know that unfortunately sienna was the one to take take the loss my thing though is moving forward and i don't know if they're able to do this like i'm fine with them having these matches here and there but like you're saying you know, make us care. I mean, maybe do some title defenses. Um, even if you could have two impact stars competing at the different companies defending the titles. Um, you know, do, do mix it up. You can't just keep doing the same thing, giving us the random tag matches or, you know, random uh, multi-man matches. I, I, I was going to say one thing that you're saying about doing defenses on other people's show. If I was impact... And, you know, they're trying to save money at the moment. And there's talk that I, I was listening to your podcast earlier on about uh, James Storm potentially leaving, you know, being on a big contract. I think you said a million dollars a year or something like that. I, maybe I misheard it's that. A that's quarter, what I thought quarter you said. million. <laughs> quarter of a million. <laughs> yeah. OK, maybe I exaggerated a bit. Um, so if you're thinking that they're trying to cut costs, I'm not being funny. If I was a local promoter running something out of Glasgow, Scotland, which is where I live, and Impact came to me and said, we want to get two guys on your show and we're going to film it or two, two of our guys on your show. I would be going, yeah, fantastic. I've got some names here for nothing. You know, I've got some names on my show for nothing. And then they don't have to have a whole set of tapings at impact, uh, you know, a universal studio and have all those production values because it's being absorbed by the local promoter. So yeah, I, I think it's, it's a brilliant business model. If they can do more of this, of having actually less, impact matches if that makes sense uh, and the cost to, to anthem and and having more stuff where you get impact talent on impact talent on other people's show because local promoters would want that surely 
Did you hear how in, into the match the crowd was too? I mean, we're we're so used to watching the Impact Zone every week. This was this was like night and day from listening to a match in the Impact Zone. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, all of the matches, even uh, the Noah one as well. You know, uh, where they're usually quite polite and clap. It was great. <laughs> it, 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 it's lovely to see. You know, and that's what I'm sure the wrestlers want to see as well. Hell to the yeah. Um, so we get the video package for Lashley, King Mo Moose, Stefan Bonner, and everything. And, and like I said, that kind of took what, what felt like three hours, but it, it was well done. It was well put together. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. So then we get a, a pro wrestling no one match. Moose and uh, Oka, uh, excuse me, Okaba Bayashi versus Nakajima and Kitamiya. And uh, this was pretty good too. Uh, my, my, I guess my only issue really with this match was that it obviously wasn't filmed in any way to uh, enhance the, the storyline with Moose. I mean, this was just a match that happened in Noah, and they put it on TV because of the way that the Moose wasn't even involved with the finish. I think what happens is they're recording a lot of this stuff for the Global Wrestling Network, and they've been kind of haven't been <laughs> being forced to use it. But the match itself was pretty good. Nakajima was was delivering some very ki stiff kicks to Moose uh, early on. And I, I definitely uh, enjoy this one as well. Probably not as much as the opening match, but I thought it was pretty good. What do you got, Adam? Yeah, so I, I, I thought you were going to go to row then. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. Do you know what? Funny enough, it was one of my favorite matches of the night. I, I just I thought it was hilarious. And it was just really good. Um, guys, you know, who I have no emotional investment into other than boots because you know we see him every week but still it was just um it looked like a typical house show you know where you got lots of slaps you know to the chest and those kind of things but it was good i really quite enjoyed it and it was just unusual not seeing moose involved in the finished it was almost like he was a you know not really important in the match you know but it was good and to further your point saying you're not emotionally invested in these guys that's something that stood out to me too because these are three dudes I wasn't emotionally invested in, but I was interested in the match. And a lot of the other matches they've been doing with Border City or whatever, you don't care about the opponent, so it's sometimes a little excited, you know, hard to get excited about the match. But this one, you actually kind of were able to get into. Uh, you're able to buy into it. But I think uh, also it helped that I think it was Josh Matthews or it might have been um, Jeremy who, who said about uh, Eddie Edwards had beaten one of them for the title. I'm not going to try and say which one it was because I've forgotten. But, you know, if, going back to what you said before, building up some of the characters, even though you don't know anything about them, really does help. Yeah, I um, I personally, I didn't have a problem with Moose not getting the pin because I think, you know, part of these partnerships is, is you know, with Noah Crash and, you know, other promotions that they're working with are going to look forward to working with. Sometimes you got to showcase their guys on Impact Television and make them look strong in a sense. Uh, my only thing, though, is it would have been nice if these were guys maybe that we had seen in Impact, like, you know, Ishimori, Marafuji. I don't know who I'm missing. But um, overall, the, the match was fine, and I had no problem with Moose not getting the pin. And one the final thing on that as well. Moose went for his finisher in the first two yeah. three seconds. <laughs> yeah. <as> well. <laughs> Always a guarantee. <laughs> And it's like he's you, like Jake you, the Snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know he's not going to connect with it. I mean, so oh my god, you know what it was? He beat Aaron Rex one time in thirty seconds. So he just figured, okay, I'm just going to go through the go for the kill every time. <laughs> All right. So here is my other gripe. <laughs> so X Division time, and this was this was actually before. Let me. I'll just get to that first. Was the uh, Eli Drake and Chris Adonis in the clubhouse? I thought this was super funny. Uh, the way that he just came in, where Chris Adonis came in with the uh, freshly made guacamole, and they're just being, you know, stereotypical shit. And <laughs> uh, I loved it. I, you know, I thought it was crazy that you know this is the first time we actually see uh, Eli Drake interacting, you know, a heel interacting with other heels in the sense of, um, you know, you got. Uh, you know, normally it's you know tag champions, but obviously in this case the tag champions are face. But um, just having that interaction, and I, I kind of felt like uh, one, one of my takeaways from this is, you know, post Bound for Glory, they can go so many ways with just from this uh, angle alone. But uh, I like the interaction; it, it was pretty cool. I, I agree with Ro. Honestly, it, it was brilliant. And why haven't they been doing this for weeks and weeks? This kind of stuff, I don't know. And you know, even Chris Adonis was great. The only thing that really put me off, and once again, it's just a, a random observation. I hate this fidget spinner that, uh, is it 
it's not it's all or teaser has it in his bandana it's really weird is it is it a fidget spinner or something else i haven't did noticed, anyone else notice I, it i haven't noticed that at all oh it, it, it's weird anyway it put me off it took me out of the segment but but adonis with a guacamole uh eli with the bandana on the wrong way or balancing yeah. on top of his head <laughs> fantastic <laughs> I, and this is this is how he should be booked every week and this is the problem I've had with the builder is that Eli Drake is a brilliant talker. He's a brilliant character. He's an all right wrestler. And they haven't done any of this. They've just done stupid things where he's been leaning on crates, not talking on the phone, but pretending he is. So someone on YouTube made a comment today. I wish I could say who it was. I don't remember at the moment. He said he thinks El Patron could join LAX, you know, as it's been, you know, assumed that that's a possibility because, Conan made it clear that they're coming coming for that title after Bound for Glory. And obviously, Ortiz or Santana is not going to challenge for that title. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a little something there with El Patron or somebody else. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe a little, maybe a little something. <laughs> I was just going to throw in an El Patron thing here. And it's not a spoiler or anything like that. But I was just on a conference call with him. Actually, I shouldn't have said that. I should have just said, I've just been talking to Alberto. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, would have, that would have seemed way more cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I asked him the question about, you know, where he's likely to feature. And he didn't give anything away. But it seemed to me that he wasn't going to be involved physically at Bang for Glory. It was the kind of impression that I got. And it could be that he's very good and he, he lied. Uh, I've never imagined a, a not wrestler him. lying. <laughs> Especially not yeah. him. <laughs> yeah exactly but it did seem to me that it was he's going to be doing some promo work in the ring going after drake and as i said i don't mean that to be a spoiler but it's not a spoiler you know that that's the kind of impression i got and i was one of the big advocates of him joining lix so uh there you go so we get the uh, non tide this is my other my other gripe the worst possible way so there was no build to this x division match whatsoever for bound for glory the worst possible way the worst possible thing you could have done before the actual match was to have that exact match for free <laughs> the night before. When they showed this graphic, I had to I had to pause the screen. I was streaming it. I had to pause it and make sure. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are these these are all the guys from the Bound for Glory match? And so Josh Matthews tells us that Trevor Lee requested this match to scout his opponents out. So he requested a match with Desmond Xavier, Mass Side Al, PD Williams, Sanjay Dutt, and Garza Jr. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Even if Trevor Lee did want this match, he could have put Andrew Everett or Caleb Conley in the match if he really wanted to scout them. I mean, it was just... I, I don't know what the hell they were thinking here doing this. With that being said, the match was great. It was very... I, very uh very x division -y. i really felt like the x division was back watching this i had read um on another site that garza was doing a lot of walking around the ring on the outside looking for his spots wasn't uh wasn't even selling on the outside was just kind of walking i didn't really catch that but the action itself was excellent the the finish i didn't care for you i mean desmond xavier i knew he was going to win this match just just when they put it together I was pretty sure he was going to want the one they wanted to look strong out of this, but there was no reason for him to paint pin Trevor Lee. I mean, he could have pinned Sanjay, someone who's got nothing going on right now. Um, this was like Sanjay was like, "Hey, I, I'm part of creative, so I'm going to book myself in the match of Bound for Glory." But there's no reason for him to be in this match. So, Ro, give me your thoughts first. Um, I don't know if this bothered you like it bothered me. I just when you have a match that had no build and then. This was the one match that was sacred on this whole pa whole pay per view, and then we got it. You know, as far as like we, we've already seen all the other matches in one way, shape, or form, this was the the safe one, and then we got it. Yeah, it confused me at first because when I seen it, it was advertised, and maybe I didn't look clearly enough. But um, I thought it was gonna be a three on three six man tag, and I said okay, you know, leading up. But then when I seen it was everyone, you know, versus everyone, and then Trevor Lee's in there. I was just like, okay, so you're giving us the same match we're going to see at the pay-per-view on free TV. Um, but with that said, the match was fine. Um, I took it as they wanted to, you know, make Desmond Xavier kind of be look, looked upon as one of the favorites leading up to the pay-per-view. 
But yeah, I just kind of just thought it was um, they could have done so many other things. I, I think the six man tag would have been better served than to give us the same match we're going to see at the pay per view. Yeah, the, the match itself was great. I, I think I mentioned to you guys that the, the spot with Desmond Azeva going over the top rope landing was was a thing of beauty. It really was. Uh, but I, I, going back to what you said in the first match, hate seeing the champion pinned, especially in a multi man match when anyone could be pinned there, uh, bar the champion. The one, the one thing I, would, I disagree with you on BQ was about uh, Sanjay not being in the match. I don't know, has he had a rematch from his title shot? I can't remember. Yeah, that's how he. That, that was that um, Street Fight or, or whatever it was, or False Count anywhere. Oh, was that the rematch? I, I thought that was where Trevor won it. Okay, fair enough. In, in which uh, case, maybe yeah. I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I thought that I thought Trevor won it in a ladder match. Uh, actually, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Just ignore that last ten seconds of my ramblings. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that was the reason I had that he was in there. But you're quite right. That you know, there's one thing that you can guarantee is that Sanjay's not walking out with that belt. Uh, at Bound for Glory. You know, he's the only one that I would be confident of not walking out. Uh, with regards to Garza Jr., I, you know, I, I like him. I've said to you, I think he's got a lot of value. He doesn't seem like an X-Division type wrestler to me. That, that's the only thing I'd say. Uh, so him being in the match is a bit off. The others, yeah, I can see it. But it was good. I, I really enjoyed the match. It was good. I think you guys um, both, I think we're all both kind of mistaken because I, I believe he didn't get his rematch clause. I think... Uh, Sanjay defended it in that ladder match and retained and then because that's when we had uh, Conley uh, assist um, Trevor Lee in beating uh, Sanjay in a street fight I think that's when Trevor Lee won the belt I mean I don't know I mean they taped so far ahead it's sometimes it's hard to remember what happened I think you're right I, th I think that is how I think Trevor Lee did win it in that false count anywhere or whatever match I think you're right about that actually all right, in case, let's rewind five minutes and uh, let's put my, my, my comments back in because I was right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So anyway, that's why, that, 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 from a creative point of view, I can see why he's in it. And, and uh, you know, let's, as I said, he's not going to win it. So it doesn't really matter. He's there. He's there to take the pin potentially. I tell you, Sanjay looks so much better without hair because uh, back when he won the X Division Championship and they were showing clips of him with hair, like at the beginning, early TNA's day, early TNA days, he looked like such a jobber. Like sometimes, I don't know, just sometimes just shaving his head completely changes character. It, it is funny, isn't it, to see Matt Sedal and uh, and also um, P.T. Williams. You know, all of them have been in there for such a long time. Uh, funny enough, I was watching this match with my daughter again, and uh, I was going on about how. Uh, I think Trevor Lee, but you know, I always like Eli Drake as my favorite character, but I think Trevor Lee is actually most probably my favorite person on impact for the moment. Uh, I just think he's great. Yeah. I like that move he did too. Uh, I, I would prefer him to use that as a finisher opposed to that stomp to the chest. I think the one, the move that I don't know if you guys caught it, but where it's like he lifts him up for a suplex and then he f lands with like a power bomb. Yeah. 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 That was badass. Yeah, I think he should use that as a finisher moving forward instead of that stomp. I, I, don't, I don't really like stomps as a finisher, but yeah, that was just one little tidbit. I thought Seidel looked good in this match too. Um, he, he's he's kind of been forgotten ever since beating Bobby Lashley and then losing the world title match to Eli Drake, which wasn't a clean loss. So he's he's been forgotten. You remember weeks ago, all the X Division people were going in. I want a title match. This and this. Like they finally visited this, what four weeks later, and they still didn't even officially do it. But that was just that was just poorly done. I want to say too, I don't like the graphics for Bound for Glory this year. I thought last year's were really cool, but I don't, I don't like this year's. I don't like Eli Drake's picture at all. That where he's all, all like hunched over the belt and like doing the cheesy cackle face. Like I don't like that. He should be looking, standing up, you know, strong and proud with the title over his shoulder. Uh, but I don't know. A lot of the match graphics I, I don't care for this year. I'm just interested to see what his title is going to look like when he uh, comes out on Sunday. No, he he had it. He showed it last week when he was um, in Crash. I, I didn't I didn't catch it. What, 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 did, what did they do to it? They just put the plate over yeah, it? Yeah, it looks like Sienna's. Oh. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I saw Eli Drake's too. Um, it wasn't a good picture, but I did see it. It's, it looks like all the green is gone. Um, it's got the impact plate. So I, uh, it looks like a di pretty different title, to be honest. Okay, cool. 
So yes, uh, Desmond Xavier wins. He, you know, obviously the one they're uh, they're pushing here. And uh, so after this, we get a uh, what did we get next? Okay, so Gail Kim is in the ring, and when she's in there talking, I kind of, I was like, kind of man, man, I don't want Gail Kim to stop wrestling. You know, like she's sometimes we've complained that Gail gets these, you know, John Cena pushes and everything, but Gail is a legend, and it just it's going to be hard to move on without her because there's some pretty big shoes to fill. So the division's going to have to get, get booked very well. The, uh, MVP of this is the, the, uh, editing, <laughs> the, uh, editing team, because, uh, you, you notice Jeremy Boyer like last, but not least Sienna, but you, but she only had two opponents. Cause obviously they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they obviously edited out the Taryn Terrell part. I told you that production team was the MVP, didn't I? Oh, so yeah. They're great. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say one thing that I noticed about that promo, by the way, and uh, I don't know if it was the commentary or whether it was Jeremy Borash when he was asking her the question, but they changed it from the last time she's going to be appearing on TV to the last time she's going to be appearing at Bound for Glory. Uh, it was a subtle change in wording, and I don't know if that was on purpose, if that was always planned or, or whatever, but it just it struck out at me that they, they moved away from it's her retirement match to... It's the last time she'll be appearing up Bound for Glory. Yeah, because on the conference call, when I did the teleconference with Gail, she said <clears throat> she said Bound for Glory wasn't her last match. She said she doesn't know when her last match is going to be, but that ba- this is her last Bound for Glory. Makes sense, I guess. I mean, I I mean, depending what ha- what the outcome of the match is, like obviously if she were to win, then it's not going to be her last match. I would think she'd defend the title and drop the title, and then. That if you know, if you, assuming she were to win the title, and then you know that'd be her last match. But it makes sense. Oh, I was just going to say it was a random thought, and it's completely removed from from the Gail Kim thing. But um, with all the releases that are going on at the moment, and I was thinking Taron Terrell specifically because you said about the production team. Do you think any of them are a swerve, and that maybe they haven't been released, such as you know Rockstar Spud turns up to help Grado, or Taron Terrell turns up and. I don't think Tyrone Terrell would drop out of the match, to be honest, and then turn up as a surprise. But do you think that could happen with any of these releases, or do you think they're all legit? I think they're all legit. All right. I just thought the timing, the timing just was just, it's weird that, you know, leading up to the pay-per-view, you know, normally after the pay-per-view, if I think if we would have seen a lot of these releases and be like, oh, but leading up, I just kind of just found that to be, you know, quite odd, but who knows? Well, I think they had to make some changes because I know, I had spoken to Marche and he was booked for the, uh, the week of impact. So maybe they're, you know, maybe, maybe they kind of had no choice. Cause they was, you know, they probably shouldn't have booked them to begin with, but yeah, they could, they probably could have done it all a lot smarter. One thing I took away from this. I like, um, I like when JB does the little in, in ring interviews, kind of like mean Gene Okerlund used to do back in the eighties, as opposed to the regular talking promo where someone comes down, grabs a mic and starts babbling for 10 minutes. Like I like when, JB's in there saying, you know, coming down the ring, my guess at this time, Gail Kim or something. I I think it just adds a little something different. I was thinking last night, if Gail Kim wins this title and then she needs to relinquish it during the tapings, I think this would be a really, really good time to do a knockouts tournament or a knockouts gauntlet for the vacant title. That would give them an opportunity to throw a couple surprises in there to debut a couple of these new knockouts that have you know been rumored to be a part of the roster for several months now. I think there's some really interesting things they could do because obviously a problem they've continued to have, they'll sign a knockout and then they don't know how to debut that person or they don't know how to, to book them at all. You know, So sometimes just doing something like this is a really, really easy way to just kind of introduce them very, you know, very casually. I don't know if that'll happen, but I, I could see it. Or maybe like a, a tournament, like because here, here's my thing with that idea. I think if you do something like that, because and, and I know Impact hasn't really been consistent with it, but we always talk about you know the rematch clause. So look, we're assuming we let, let's say Sienna doesn't retain the title, she drops it, and uh, Gail Kim relinquishes it. It kind of messes Sienna over a little bit. Whereas you could have a tournament and then maybe part of the rematch clause for Sienna. Uh, Sienna faces the winner in the finals. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't know, but um, 
yeah, I mean, I guess that could work too. That way, it gives a gives us an opportunity to see some of the knockouts that they have signed and we haven't seen yet, and it gives you know it gives them something to do. From what I understand, um, Tessa Blanchard will not be at these tapings. I know it was reported that she would be, but I've I've uh, further read that she won't be. I was just going to say about the whole uh, Gail Kim thing about winning the title. I, I just don't think she will. I, I think the the, the I, I've just got this feeling, and we're going into fantasy booking, and I know I missed the the preview show, but I've got a feeling Ali's going to win it in some nefarious means, and even a heel turn or something like that. But I, I hope Gail doesn't win it. She's the one who doesn't need it. You know, she can still have a great match. When Ric Flair went out, he had a great match with HBK. You know, he, you don't need to win the title on your way out. Uh, and from from what I know about wrestling, it's not the done thing, is it? To, to go out with the title, it's to lose the title on the way out. So I know we said it's not her last match, but I, I, it doesn't sit right with me that she should win it, especially when she hasn't really had any matches uh, on the way back. She's just kind of been in the main event and been part of multi -ma multi woman matches. Um, so to me, it just doesn't seem right that she wins it. I actually had pegged um, Taryn to win this thing. So now that she's not in the picture, I'm just. I, I think Sienna is going to retain, but we'll see. So we get the final for Global Forged. And uh, I know that th they didn't really do a very good job of making us care about any of the competitors or even understand what the competition was exactly. You know, they, they took some training footage, some independent footage, and then kind of try to package it as a reality show. So me personally, I, I did. I, I've, I think I stated this last week. I did have two guys I cared about, Jake something and Hakeem Zane, because they both wrestle locally for me. And I've, I've had conversations with Hakeem Zane. I was just talking to him um, on Twitter last night, as a matter of fact. I know he's really excited. He was announced as the winner. I know he's excited for it. And, and um, they said that the winner of this was going to be a bound for glory. So I don't know what capacity that's going to happen. Maybe he gets thrown in the X Division match. Who knows? But if you're not familiar with Akeem Zayn, he has been on Impact a couple times. He was on One Night Only, teamed with Idris Abraham against the Veterans of War. That, uh, yeah, that's who they. It was a really good match. So if you just, you know, you look that up maybe on YouTube or something, you can kind of see what he's capable of. The other time he was on Impact, him and Idris jobbed in about a minute. So he is, he has been on our screen. But uh, and I'm pretty sure I can get him on the on the channel here pretty soon and we can talk global forge but but yeah he he wins um you know when they did these eliminations and everything they you know they were obviously extremely scripted because you know no one was excited no one was disappointed it was like i don't know they, they could have they, they could have done a much better job with this and hakeem even told me that last night he's like i you know they could have put a lot more of it on tv than they did hey guys i got some breaking news man i don't know if you guys seen this it says, due to circumstances beyond our control, Taya Valkyrie will not be at BFG or oh. the tapings. We look forward to seeing her in 2018. That's from the Impact uh, Twitter page. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah. I don't, I don't, if it's saying seeing her in uh, 2018. I wonder if she got hurt or what happened. I, I mean, that's crazy. I think they're trying to make it clear that she wasn't, like, released from the company or anything. Wow. Uh don't know what to say about that. Although, I'm guessing now that Rosemary will be in the main event, well, in the, the knockouts match. Most likely. I think they did something similar to that uh, not too long ago. Okay, um, I'm looking here. Taya says, I'll post a video this afternoon and chat with all of you to say I'm, dis to say I'm disappointed is an understatement. I'm devastated, but I'll be back in January. So I'm guessing she is injured. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. That's a nightmare. I mean, the fact that she says she'll be back, I mean, I don't know, I mean, what she could be referring to. I mean, obviously, we don't hope for anyone to get hurt, but, I mean, I guess at least that'll sound better than, say, you know, she's departing the company. Did she have a match with Sexy Star, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I hope she's all right. Um, and, unfortunately, this is one of the matches I was really looking forward to. I think it was going to be oh. the you know the show stealer, but it's uh, impact just can't catch a break at times, can they? God. Well, the right thing to do now would be probably if you throw add Rosemary to to the knockouts match and just make it a fatal four way. That'll make it you know be interesting. But yeah, wow, that's a big blow because that 
was one of the matches you know I was looking forward to just to see what they were gonna do. With what is a red wedding match? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no, you didn't care about the, the the competitors. You just wanted to see what the match was. <laughs> oh no no no! I mean I I mean I like I like both women, but I was just interested because like um you know they were it, it had you believe that it was gonna be a first blood. I just couldn't see uh blood them doing a first blood match i was of the mindset something with the mist or maybe they changed the lighting where the whole all the lighting is red so they're wrestling a match where in red lighting i know that's probably bad on the eyes but i just wanted to see what they were going to do but that's yeah really i agree bro it's it's a real shame it's a real shame because you know as i said to me it was one of the, the highlights of the card but I'm, I'm genuinely disappointed about that god i don't even know how, how we press on with a the podcast now god let's put dan lambert in the match against Ram- uh, rosemary instead there we go <laughs> <laughs> i'm a booking genius yeah there we go i i mean i would have to imagine it'll be a, a four a fatal four-way but they also got to make up for that match too so you know you you remember last year at slammiversary i don't remember exactly what happened i know maria couldn't wrestle um against gail kim and then uh, Sienna ended up in the match, and Jade. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Did she break her wrist? Yes, but yeah, yeah, I remember. Mm. But they turned it into but, like a four way. Maybe it was. But, a but you're quite right that that they're going to have airtime. They can't just make all the matches longer. I suppose they could, but you, you really want to put another match on the card, and it just makes a shame that. Uh, it, it, do you know if it was me, what I'd do? I'd most probably put Braxton Sitter, although he's rumored not to be that. I would put him in with. Uh, and take uh, Gaza out of the X Division match, yeah. Because you know, th- at least it's something that you can very quickly care about. That was, and that was a point I was going to make is that they ended up putting James Storm versus Braxton Sutter on the card last year's Slammiversary, last minute. So, I, uh, man. All right, we get, we got to move on to the main event here. That's a. Uh, I, I could sit there and complain about that all day. That's devastating. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on oh, Twitter just- here. Uh, Just before you do, by the way, because I, I, I know we're going on the main event, one thing we, we haven't talked about, and I can't remember where it fitted on the show, but Dan Lambert's promo again, fantastic. And that, another brilliant, he's the best promo on, on the bloody mark. Yeah, I forgot. Show. He's fantastic. <laughs> I forgot he's, he had he's one. He's yeah. fantastic. He was, once again, I, I, I could watch him all day, every week. No, don't you feel week, like, every day. Don't you feel like Lashley didn't look, I don't want to say he doesn't look engaged, but I don't really think Lashley knows how to act. I, I, and I don't mean acting like a actor, actress. I mean I don't think he knows how to carry himself in this feud because you got Dan, Dan Lambert putting down professional wrestling, and then it looks like Lashley's kind of agreeing with him, but he doesn't he doesn't really know how to respond. He he's he's almost like the, Dan Lambert's like the star of this program, and then Moose, and then Stephen Bonner, and then America's Top Team, and then then Lashley's kind of last. Well, they took the mic away from him. I think that's the thing. You know, in the past, that was one thing that was a criticism of Lashley was his mic work. And when he came on board to Impact, you know, when they gave him the mic, I mean, he was cutting some, you know, good promos. I mean, I, now I can't think of one that comes to the top of my head, but, you know, he had improved his talking. So you take that away and, you know, you give it to someone who, you know, and Dan Labbert, who can, you know, deliver on the mic. So then last you just kind of just sit in there, arms crossed, you know, and just quiet. But yeah, I, I, I thought though Lambert's promo, man, I mean, and you know, the my biggest takeaway from it, and it was kind of telling, I don't know if he it was just something that he said or, you know, they kind of foresee what they were going to do. But when he said, you know, when we come back, the only thing that's going to be at this theme park are roller coasters. We're tearing it all down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It's good because, you know, I like these kind of, um, you know, teetering on reality promos, you know, saying that, you know, you're not paying for your tickets kind of thing. I quite like it, but it, he's been brilliant. It, I, I was listening to the, the preview that you did talking about this match, and I've been exactly the same with the roller coaster where I couldn't care about it. And in the last three, four weeks, it suddenly got interesting with the stupid stuff at America's top team training facility, which has been ridiculous, but brilliant. And then Dan Lambert in the ring. It's been great. It, it, you know, now that, that we know that the, the knockouts match isn't happening, this is my favorite uh, match I'm looking forward to. 
I think it's going to be a train wreck, by the way. I do think the match will be a train wreck. I think Bonner is going to be terrible in the ring. I've just got this feeling. But uh, I'm still looking forward to see what happens. So main event time, I'm not going to BS anyone here. I didn't really watch this one because, uh, you know, I'll, I'm still out of town for another three or four weeks. I've, I have to stream the show online. I was I was having a lot of problems with the stream. And uh, by the time the, ma- the main event came and it cut out on me, I just I didn't have the energy to mess with it again. So, um, Adam, give me your thoughts on the main event. And um, I, I know that I think Johnny Impact might have rolled up Ortiz or so for the win. But uh, I, I'd really know very little little about this one and the uh, angle after. Yeah, LAX looked great as always. You know, the, the match was good. It was a good match. I hate the ending again. Johnny Impact, your top baby face. That's two matches in a row now. He's won with roll ups, and 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 it's just a terrible way to book a champion. That's how a heel should be winning. And he did the same with Garza Junior, where he rolled him up uh, for for the for the win. It's just terrible booking. I like the ending. I like the pulling back all the foam and things. And I tell you what, it gave me a really good insight into what these guys are actually landing on. Because I thought, do you know what? It's some plywood of some sort. Um, but they look like really hard boards that they're landing on. I know there's foam, but it looked badass. I've got to say, it looked really badass when Eli Drake did that to him at the end. Yeah, Although it does make me worry. I'm sorry, bro. It does make me worry that when you have the, the heel winning in such a devastating fashion before the pay-per-view you do worry that he's not going to win he's not going to retain the title yeah no all i was going to add i felt you know the match was fine but i think the post-match angle that was really telling it really show uh, showed an aggressive side of eli drake um yeah a part of me was kind of thinking you know we've been conditioned to believe you know when someone wins the the show before the pay-per-view usually they lose but um i think this is just a way to reestablish eli drake is you know he's the champion you know a lot of times we see him you know it looks like he was trying to avoid impact or you know just cowardly ways or using adonis as a shield so to speak but um you know this really displayed his, his aggressive side like you know impact you know you're an outsider I'm going to show you what I do to outsiders, and I'm walking into BFG as champ. I'm walking out as champ. So would you say this was a pretty good um, post angle? I mean, you know, for the go home, for the match and everything? Yeah, visually, I thought it was fantastic. You know, um, seeing the ring almost tore apart and and taking them out. I I thought it was a really good go home visual. Really good. Yeah, I I, I agree with Adam. So, uh, before we wrap this up, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm, I'm looking at a uh, Taya's Twitter feed. She re- she's responding to a lot of people. It looks like this red wedding was a first blood from kind of what I'm understanding here. She is, looks like kind of campaigning for this to happen at lockdown instead. Um, and what reason I'm saying that a lot of people are talking about lockdown and she's retweeting and say, yeah, I, I second this, I, this and this and this. So, However, this is the tweet that stands out to me Um, because someone said so much for the first blood match against Rosemary. And she said, if you think for one second that isn't going to happen in January, then you don't know me or Rosemary. So she's bringing up January twice here. Obviously, they're not taping in January. Maybe they're doing another live one line only like they did this year. Are they not taping in January? Well, when's the next tapings uh, after this one? Because this... I'm guessing they'll have four or five weeks it should of tapings, be in like, which will take it us should through. Be, it should be in February. I, think, I, I thought they usually take the first week of January, and then that used to take you through to the Glass, the the UK tour. Oh wait, you're um, right. You're right because I'm thinking it's December. So they're filming this month, five nights. I think it's five nights, two episodes a night, ten. So that takes to the middle of January. So yeah. She just tweeted again, too, um, just saying that she didn't pull out. It's uh, personal reasons. Okay. So that, Next I mean, thing you know is the, the Johnny uh, impact will be uh, dropping out next. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Could you, could you imagine <laughs> if that and not, you know, knock on wood, but could you imagine uh, he, can't, he can't compete and then his replacement is El Patron? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It would be 
terrible. <laughs> but uh, well, I hope it's all all right with her anyway. Yeah, I I think though, you know what? What they're just gonna have to do, they're gonna really have to put their thinking caps on and just think outside the box, give us some surprises. Uh, one thing, uh, BQ, when you were talking about maybe uh, Hakeem Zayn being added to the X Division match, could you imagine what if they just said, "All right, let's just give this guy an, a shot," and he were to win the match and win the title in his first match? Well, not his first match, but you know, as part of the Impact roster, that'd be some crazy stuff. But you know, it, that's you know, out of the box, who who would expect him to to win his first match? So I was just going to add something. To I think that's a great idea, by the way. Although the problem is, is that when you win a match where there's already six in it, it becomes overcrowded as it is. But it would have been a nice idea if they had a mission, or, or if they'd announced that the winner was going to be in the match. Um, I was just thinking about the the Rosemary thing. I tell you what they should do is they should throw the checkbook at getting Awesome Kong in there. Or someone, or Havoc, uh, Jessica Havoc, in that as a replacement, and and make out that it hasn't been changed, you know. So the Rosemary comes out expecting a face tire, and then someone comes out and says she's injured, but we've got a replacement, and, and not cancel the match that way. I think that's the way they should go, as opposed to adding it to the main event. Oh, sorry, the the knockouts main event. I think so too. I don't think that's what they're going to do though. Hmm. Anyway, sorry, I, I just changed the subject from from uh, uh, the X Division there. Apologies for that, bro. No, no, no worries, no worries. I think we're all kind of in disarray right now, just to see what you know, to see what's uh, happened. Well, I guess we'll uh, by the time this is up, um, I guess we'll know. So we'll just keep an eye out for Twitter. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. That'll do it for the Go Home Show, uh, Impact Wrestling, and uh, we will be talking Bound for Glory when it happens. And this was a good episode. wasn't bad at all. So uh, much better than the last few weeks. So we will catch you guys next time. Enjoy Bound for Glory. Peace.